So you need to know um, certain formulas for the exam. These four formulas are the main ones, probably the longest ones that you should know, and two out of the four are pretty uh, common, or at least not common, you use them recently. Midpoint formula, you average the x's, comma, you average the y's, and that's the midpoint, it's an average. Uh, law of cosines, if you're solving for A, or angle A, the law of cosines would be this. Again, you should know this formula for your final exam. Uh, the period 7 final exam is tomorrow, so just to remind you, if you haven't seen that yet, your exam's after lunch tomorrow. Uh, distance formula, distance formula is D equals the square root of the difference in the x's plus the difference in the y's. So that's the distance formula. Law of sines is sine A over A equals sine B over B. You can also do it A over sine A, B over sine B. Do either one. Um, there are some formulas. Uh, commonly missed question, uh, number three is a commonly missed question on the final exam. So to condense, you'd have you'd have log two, and this difference is going to become a division. So you have x plus three divided by x minus three equals one. And then from this point, you need to write it in exponential form. Exponential form looks like this: x plus three divided by x minus three equals this log 2, when it goes to the other side, the inverse operation of log 2 is a base of 2. Base of 2 with 1 as an exponent. So you'd have x plus 3 equals 2 x minus 3. And when you solve that, you would get x equals 9. Uh, but the main reason why I'm showing you is this step right here. Students sometimes forget uh, how to do that correctly. Completing the square. So this is a circle when you complete the square, you have x squared plus 8x plus blank plus y squared minus 4y plus blank equals negative 5. Uh, and the formula you would use, uh, if you need a formula for this, is b over 2 squared, where b is this number 8, so 8 over 2 squared is 16, you add 16 to both sides, 4 over 2 squared is 4. So uh, that would give you this setup, and then you would factor. These are perfect square trinomials. So you'd have x plus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 15. Uh, and since this is a circle, you'll probably be asked to write the center of the circle or the radius of the circle, or both. So the center is negative 4, positive 2, and the radius is the square root of 15. Um, so on this one, you can figure out direction of a hyperbola. Uh, be careful not to say it's how big the numbers are. That's for an ellipse. The oval shape is which number is bigger. This is a minus. So the positive one wins. The positive one's in front. So x comes first. Direction is horizontal. x is first, or x is positive. On the center, in this case, is 0, 0. There's the h and k value with the x and the y are both 0. So the center is 0, 0. So you have 0 right here. And then you take a square root of these numbers. So square root of 4, square root of 9. So 2, you're going to go left and right 2, because it's under the x. Left and right 2. And then you're going to go up and down 3, because the 9 is from under the y. And then you make your box, or at least the corners of the box. And you can draw your asymptotes. And this is horizontal, so it looks like this. Oh, uh, and that's your graph. Uh, so that's the hyperbola, it's horizontal hyperbola. The next one's graphing. So first you should factor you have negative 3, x minus 6, x plus 1. Since 
no factors to buy out. We have no points of discontinuity. Point of discontinuity looks like that. There's none of those. We have two vertical asymptotes. Make sure you include the x equals x equals 6, x equals negative 1 for the asymptotes. So that means we have dashed line right here, dashed line right there, those are asymptotes. The graph's going to approach that point. Uh, in our table, we can put negative 1 and 6 on our table, and we're going to have to pick three other x values around our asymptotes, one in each region. That's undefined. So for instance, when we plug 0 into this function, we would have negative 3 over 0 minus 6, 0 plus 1, so it would be a half. 0, a half. And when we plug in negative 2, for instance, negative 2, we would get negative 3 eighths. And when we plug in 7, for instance, we would get negative 3 eighths again. So negative 2, negative 3 eighths, 7, negative 3 eighths. So hopefully, if you know generally what graphs like this look like, those points will help you figure out what the graph looks like. So there's this point on the left that's below the axis. You're going to follow the axis and then follow the asymptote down. So you'll have a graph that looks like that. On this middle section, you're going to be bound by the two asymptotes and bound by the x-axis. <coughs> or sorry, the, the y-axis. No, that's the x-axis. There we go. Something like that. Really wide-looking view. And then on this side, you follow the axis, follow the asymptote. Uh, so that's number six, chapter nine, if you're looking for more examples like that. On uh, number seven, I uh, forgot to change up from your review packet. So it might seem kind of so What I already did. Uh, so we already did this, but so you should know how to do this. You multiply this by 2, <laughs> multiply this by x plus 4. So your denominator is 2x minus 7x plus 4, and your numerator is 7x plus 38. And it's not an equation, so you can't do anything else after that. You could distribute in the denominator, but I don't mind if you leave it like that. <coughs> Bless you. On uh, number 8, you have to use a trig ratio. So sine, cosine, or tangent. I'm going to use tangent of b equals 15 over 27. And to solve for b, you do inverse tangent, 15 over 27. And just to remind you on the calculator, it looks like this, second tangent, 15 over 27, which is 29.1. And don't forget your units. <coughs> 29.1 degrees. Uh, so that's the front page. On the next page. Uh, solve number nine without logarithms, without ln, without log log. One way to do that is to make common bases. So you have four to the three x is greater than, how can we write 1 64th with a common base? A common base would be a 4. So 4 to what exponent is 1 64th? Well, it would be 4 to the third is 64, 4 to the negative third is 1 64th. So we're substituting this 1 64th for 4 to the negative 3. So we have 3x is greater than negative 3 x is greater than negative 1. Um, the next one has an ln, so you do the inverse operation, which you e both sides. e and ln cancel. You have 2x minus 3 equals e squared. Notice this is an exponent, the 2. It's not e times 2. It's e squared. 
And then you would solve for x, so you would add 3 and divide by 2. Uh, and you should get the actual answer for that, which is e, second ln is e squared plus 3 divided by 2. So 5, 19.5. Uh, approximately 5.1945. Uh, number 11 might be one of the most commonly missed questions for different reasons. Usually the most, um, the question that students leave blank. Not a lot of students, but most of the time students will answer all the questions, but sometimes students leave a question like this blank. Maybe they're not sure what inverse means, or they just don't know the process. Um, but the process, basically two steps. You switch, switch x and y is the definition of an inverse, switch x and y. So there is no y, but this f of x is the same as y. f of x is the same thing. So you'd have x equals 3, y minus 2 squared plus 1. And then um, the second step is solve for y. Those are the basic uh, two steps. The third step is to write the correct notation, which sometimes students forget to do that. But on this, you would subtract 3, or sorry, subtract 1 divide by 3. Then you get to this point, and then you can take a square root of both sides. x minus 1 over 3. When you get to that point, then you add 2. So you have y equals 2 plus or minus square root of x minus 1 over 3. Uh, and even at this point, you're actually not done. Since we substituted y for f of x, you have to change it back to f of x. And you use the right notation notation is the inverse, inverse notation. So the correct answer is the inverse of f equals 2 plus or minus square root x minus 1 over 3. So this is the answer that will get full credit on the test with the right notation. So be careful about that. Make sure you study that. Uh, suppose the Stanford Achievement Test has 15 spelling multiple choice questions with options A, B, C, D, E. How many different ways are there to answer these 15 questions? It would be five options. You have five options, and you have 15 questions. So it's five to the 15. And you should simplify that to be five raised to the 15 is 3.05. times 10 to the 10. So there are a lot of different ways that you could answer all the different questions. Uh, number 13 is pretty recent material. This is when you'll use either law of sines or law of cosines, one of these two, or both sometimes. So, uh, draw the triangle, A, B, C, A is 20 degrees, across from B is 9, across from angle A is 12. This is side-side angle case. Side-side angle will be law of sines. Uh, if you just try to set up law of cosines, you're going to have too many variables. So in this case, the directions say solve for B only, so you'd have sine of 20 over 12 equals sine of B over 9. And when you solve for b, you'd have sine b equals 9 sine 20 over 12. Uh, and then you have b equals the inverse sine 9 sine 20 over 12, which would be inverse sine 9 sine 20 over 12. 14.9. 14.9 degrees, and the direction said only to solve for B. So we won't solve for the other stuff. Solve for the other stuff, you just do law of sines again. Or subtract 180 minus 34.9 would be angle C. <coughs> On the last one, expand a binomial. Uh, you would use Pascal's triangle the third row of Pascal's triangle, 
So you have 1, 3, 3, 1. The x's are your first term. The exponents on that start at 3 and go downhill. And then the 2y goes uphill with the exponents. They ascend. Uh, and since I didn't put the negatives with the 2y, negative 2y, negative 2y, I usually just alternate the signs out here so I don't have to worry about multiplying the negatives. So our answer would be x cubed, negative 3 times 2 is 6, negative 6 x squared y, 2 to the 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 12 x y squared. And that's a 1, that's a 1, this is 8y cubed. I don't know, that would be your final answer. Thank you for your faithfulness in watching all of my videos, every minute of every video. Enjoy your summer.